Did you know? Digimon started out as Tamagotchi, marketed as virtual pets that would be more appealing to boys than the cute Tamagotchi pets. Digital monsters were created by Bandai, the same company behind Tamagotchi, and who would later go on to distribute the first anime adaptation, Digimon Adventure. The follow-up season, simply called Digimon Adventure 2, features a Digimon character called Vimon, which is reminiscent of V-Pets. Derived from the shortened version of Virtual Pets, V-Pets were Tamagotchi who could fight one another and who would go on to evolve conceptually into Digimon as we know them today. Naming a single creator of Digimon is a tricky subject and continues to be a source of speculation. This is likely because a massive multimedia franchise such as Digimon was created by a number of individuals. The name Akiyoshi Hongo is credited in the anime adaptations of Digimon for original concept, but the name itself is suspected to be a portmanteau created by Bandai to credit several key figures. Aki Maita, co-creator of Tamagotchi, Hiroshi Izawa, author of the first Digimon manga, and Takichi Hongo of marketing. The fact that the word Tamagotchi itself is a mixture of the Japanese word Tamago and the English word watch makes the idea of Bandai using a name combo pseudonym seem extremely plausible. Due to the fact that the anime was broadcast in many different countries, many steps were taken to localize the series and make it marketable and relatable to audiences. In the English dub, several names of the main cast were changed. Tai Chi became Tai, Yamato was changed to Matt, and Takuru was simply known as TK. Characters including Joe, Mimi, and Sora retained their original given names, while Izzy's nickname arose from his family name Izumi. Other Eastern cultural nuances throughout the show were adjusted accordingly, such as Joe's chant in episode 11 being altered from the original sutra. Changes were also made in consideration of the targeted children's demographic stateside. In episode 27, The Gateway to Home, Naniman is subdued by being tricked into drinking sake. On American TV, it was soda. In episode 30, Almost Home Free, the kids are picked up by Sora's cousin Dwayne. In the original, the kids actually hitchhike with a complete stranger. Given the time and circumstances surrounding the series' debut, these changes were fairly minor. What's more surprising is what wasn't changed for American television. Digimon such as Angimon and Devimon still made appearances with their names and designs intact. In episode 38, Prophecy, the demon-like antagonist, Myotismon, returns at an appointed time as foretold by a prophecy. His appearance is at the hour of the beast, at precisely the sixth second of the sixth minute of the sixth hour. This is directly pulled from passages in the biblical book of Revelation concerning the perceived end of the world. All of this appeared unedited on American television courtesy of Fox Kids. And unlike the subject of said episode, the world didn't come to an end. For most fans, the quality and canonicity of the different series have been a source of contestation and confusion, mostly starting with the third series, Digimon Tamers. A spin-off of the first two series, Tamers initially put off many viewers due to its premise, essentially negating its predecessors as imaginary monsters from a television show, complete with its own purchasable merchandise, before the kids discover real Digimon for themselves. The series also differed greatly from Digimon Adventure because of its overall tone. Instead of being bright and fun, Tamers was comparatively darker. This could be chalked up to the involvement of writer Chiaki J. Konaka, whose credentials include Ra Zephon, Helsing, and The Big O. The Japanese end of production is not the only one guilty of messing with fans' heads. In the very first episode of Tamers, apart from meeting main character Takato, we are also introduced to his homeroom teacher, Nami Asagi. In the dub, she's voiced by Laura Jill Miller, who is the voice of Kari Kamiya in Digimon Adventure. In the season finale, A Million Points of Light, Kari is shown grown up and living her dream of being a school teacher. The two characters, sharing physical similarities, occupation, and voice actor, was almost too much for many English-speaking fans, as there's no real in-story connection between these characters other than those found behind the scenes. However, characters such as Ryo Akiyama cause additional confusion. A prominent early figure in the handheld days of the franchise, Ryo made a quick cameo in episode 23 of Digimon Adventure 2 alongside Ken Ichijuji. He is then featured again as a character in Digimon Tamers. Though elaborate explanations exist for how this could occur, including time travel, many have simply accepted that Ryo doesn't have to play by the rules and exists as a sort of totem or Easter egg for the Digimon faithful. 
episodes in some of the latest installments of the franchise, such as Digimon Fusion, known as Digimon Cross Wars in Japan, continue the tradition of blurring the lines between continuities. For example, Episode 78, aka Episode 24 of the installment, The Young Hunters Who Leapt Through Time, is enthusiastically entitled Grand Gathering of the Legendary Heroes, the playoffs of the Digimon All-Stars, and features special cameos of familiar trainers and fan favorites from every previous animated incarnation of Digimon in a dimension known as DigiQuartz. With its own operating rules to separate it from both the human and the digital world, the DigiQuartz offers a catalyst through which impossibilities like this can occur. However, like always, the franchise presents the content in the same way fans have interacted with it over the years, and that's in a spirit of simply having fun with friends and digivolving into a better person along the way. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DigiNoAnime.net where we post anime-related trivia every single day. And by the way, the character of Ty in Digimon and your narrator today has been me, Joshua Seth. So hey fans, uh, I know I haven't recorded something in a long, long time, uh, years to be uh, imprecise. And the reason I'm doing this now is ever since the 15th anniversary of Digimon was announced, I've been inundated with emails and private Facebook messages asking if I'll come back and voice Ty. Uh, my answer to you is, if I'm asked, I will be happy to. I'd be happy to keep the integrity of Ty's character in Digimon intact by voicing that. Doesn't matter that I'm retired, I'm not dead. After all, I'm still out there performing. It's just that I left Hollywood in order to tour around with my live hypnosis and mind reading shows. Also, I am going to start making appearances at cons if people ask me. Here's the way it will work. You guys tell the cons that you're involved in, hey, Joshua Seth is willing to do this now because of the renewed interest in Digimon and the other stuff. Uh, what I've got to do is be able to do my live stage show at night. Then I'll come and I'll talk, I'll do Q&As and whatever else they want me to do during the day. And then at night, you guys get all dressed up as your favorite characters and I will hypnotize you to enact them in various scenarios in a hallucinatory trance state brought on by hypnosis. It is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to doing that. But, uh, but it's happening, so it's up to you guys to uh, kind of spread the word to uh, interested parties that can make these approaches to me uh, in a business-like fashion, and I will do it. Um, the way that you can communicate with me best, by the way, is through Facebook. Facebook slash official Joshua Seth. So, um, and I appreciate your continued involvement and uh, look forward to talking to you through there. Also, my main website is joshuaseth.com if you want to see videos and things of the live shows that I do. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Next back channel. Da-da-da-da-da-da.